Hey, how we going guys? Mick here from Not Cartel, back on a kick-ass beer review. Today I'm going to review one of my own home brews, one of my latest, um, um, well, it's experimental. It's it's not something that I've done before, uh, well not in this sense being a Aussie wheat ale. Um, predominantly New Zealand ingredients, but hey, New Zealand's close enough. Um, so, the Nectaron Wheat Ale. Um, I'm going to get poured up and then we'll go through this recipe. Um, this morning I've just switched over to three of my taps. I switched over to uh, Intertaps, the um, stainless steel um, 8022s that I picked up through a um, through one of the, a second-hand recycle shop um, not far from here, and I brought it as a a three-tap uh, font and. I was going to originally set up a new new keyser and go with a a, um, a new setup and use the use the font. Uh, decided against that. Um, so the issue I had was that the intertaps aren't spring loaded. When I purchased a font that wasn't spring loaded, um, the springs in my Chinese uh, taps uh, import taps didn't uh, fit the intertaps. They were too short. This morning I thought, I might try and stretch the springs out and see whether we can get um, a, spring, a spring back on them, um, um, auto shut from stretching the springs, and it worked, and they actually thread in and they seal off and they're, they're fine, they work quite well. Um, with the Chinese shanks, uh, the 100mm shanks that I picked up from Cheeky Peaks, um, and well, there we go. They seal off. They work. Um, the springs stretched out. Perfect. Not a problem at all. So um, I'm stoked with that. Just got to purchase one more tap, uh, and then we'll have the four inter taps. And I'll keep the um, the Chinese ones as spares. Uh, so we'll pull this up. We'll talk about uh, this Nectaron wheat ale. So. I need to just muck around with that PSI on that uh, on that keg. I haven't had a chance to open the lid up and play around with it just yet. Okie dokie. There we go. So nice, tight, compact head there. Um, beautiful colour. Exactly what I was heading for. Um, as we discuss this recipe, um, that colour. Is what I'm chasing. So for those who, tune, excuse me, tuned in and watched uh, the video in regards to the wheat ales that I I reviewed by Colt United Breweries, um, their mass release of um, wheat ales, and one of my favourite being Welder's Dog. 100% sure it's still available, and if it's not, then I'll be heartbroken. But um, summer coming up, spring, summer coming up, warmer months. Uh, get back into it. I always had. Wheat ales, Aussie wheat ales in the fridge. So, um, anyway, the appearance is great. Nice uh, compact head there. Going to get some good lacing off that by the looks of it. The aroma, it's good. So, let's talk about the recipe and why I'm getting a good aroma and so forth. Um, 23 litre batch, um, 60 minute boil, 75%. Between 70 and 75% is the mash efficiency on my unit. 26.59 um, litres of mash volume, uh, 6.49 litres of sparge volume. Uh, original gravity should have come in at 1046. Um, it was slightly higher at 1048, but it did final gravity sort of float between the uh, 1008 and the 10010. Um, Coming in around about 15 IBUs. Um, EBC colour is 6.6. .6. Beautiful. Um, and around about the 5% mark for ABV, which is um, spot on for where I wanted it. Anywhere between 4.6 to sort of 4.9, you know, 5% is really good for an Aussie wheat ale. Um, <clears throat> so I'll say Nectaron being New Zealand hop and using it gladfield new zealand gladfield malts um close enough so they're just across the uh very close across the stretch of water there we do consider new zealand part of australia so um 
why not? Um, so we used 2.3 kilos of the Gladfield Pilsner malt, 2.3 kilos of the Gladfield's wheat malt, I'm going to go with the Gladfields rolled oats, but I just went with off-the-shelf rolled oats there. This is your standard run-of-the-mill um, porridge mix, uh, and that was half a kilo in that. Um, probably going to bring that down a little bit and increase um, increase the amount of the uh, other fermentables in there. Um, mash step uh, was a single mash step at 65 for 60 minutes. We bung the nectar on in um, 10 grams at 60 minutes and then a further 40 grams, so 50 grams in total, a, to a further 40 grams come in at uh, hop stand, 80 degrees for 15 minutes um, and that was added at intervals so not not the whole 40 grams went in um not the whole 40 grams went in at the one time it was uh basically let's say 10 ish grams here you know waited a couple of minutes added the next lot so just just slowly adding it and then as it sort of cooled down a little bit more over the 15 minutes, I think we only lost um, seven degrees in 15 minutes. So, um, and that was with a, a fan blowing on the on the unit. Um, we, the plan was to go with BRY 97 um, West Coast Ale Yeast, but we decided to go with the Mangrove Jacks uh, Hophead Ale Yeast. Uh, it's supposed to help um, bring through more fruitier um, esters and also assist with uh, bringing those volatiles out in the hops a lot more than what a normal uh, yeast would. Um, I actually did mine. I found some of the mangrove jacks are a little bit slow. Um, they kick off very, very slowly. Um, and then once they get going, they they go. They really do go. So um, <clears throat> I only added that straight in pitch, dry pitch, not a problem at all. Um, fermentation was going to be 18 degrees for 10 days. We went 20 degrees on the first 24 hours. We brung it down to 18 degrees progressively and got down to 16 degrees progressively over those 10 days, um, which may have influenced it a little bit more um, through having control over that yeast um, slowing it down a little bit, trying to push through, um, not allowing too many uh, unwanted sort of esters to come through with that particular yeast. I think I controlled it quite well. Um, and so on the nose, from the Nectaron, I'm getting, from the descriptors they give for Nectaron, um, pineapple is supposed to be the first one that comes up, uh, and then your citrus and, and your sort of tropical notes. Um, this is more of a more of a subtle candied pineapple. Um, a bit more of the citrus and the tropical notes are coming through on this um, compared to the pineapple, uh, but that's no way um, sort of a direction I wasn't I was you know I was I wasn't pushing out to get just just pineapple. I was I was more wanting the pineapple to be there. On the aroma and the flavour, uh, but the other ones that come through just as even. So, it is uh, a very subtle across all descriptors. The wheat comes through nicely. I pick up a little bit more of those rolled oats in it than I do the the wheat um, percentage um, and the pill. So, if anything, I'd probably change it to um, something uh, that's kind of, I think, work better with the with the wheat malt would probably be marisota. Uh, slightly more biscuit to it um, and less rolled oats so maybe step it up to three kilos of the of the pilsner if not um, maybe 2.6 2.7 of the of the marisota uh, step it up to three kilos of the wheat malt and down to probably 300 grams of the rolled oats taste comes through comes through really nicely <coughs> my throat's giving me a bit of grief at the moment <coughs> <coughs> yeah 
it is a bit dry too at the moment too so it's sort of playing on the throat uh, so out of those three that I, I reviewed for Colton United Breweries um, this one sort of comes across middle of the the range so that uh, I think it was Mountain Goat um, is more where this one sort of sitting at I'm heading towards the Green Beacon I really want to get to the Green Beacon uh, because if I can't get Welder's Dog anymore Green Beacon is the recipe that I want to nail uh, that's pretty much it I may I might put it in down in the description the the recipe um, yeah, we'll do that. We'll put it in the description. Uh, we'll we'll um, share this one as much as possible uh, and the rest of the ones that are coming. So there's another wheat ale to be done and there's also uh, two pale ales that are coming as well. So the pales will be hazy. I hope they stay hazy. Uh, I really hope this one stays hazy as well, but um, it's certainly coming across. So far, so good. It's, it's still quite young in the keg, um, but it's a smasher, particularly after today, uh, being so busy and um, slight exhaustion. That's, that's um, I don't know, I think that keg might bottom out before the other kegs are full. Cheers, don't forget to go and uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, Hop Cartel, like, share, subscribe. The Unicorn Brewing Project as well. If you haven't checked out the other project or the other channel, go right over and, and check it out. I might even put that down in the description as well, along with all the, the avenues, <coughs> suppliers, um, <coughs> media, um, devices, all that. You know you're going to find it down there in the, in the description. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, uh, because there's plenty more to come. Cheers.